Hello, and welcome to Purdue University's CS180X Computer Science A online course. Uh, today is going to be a tutorial on how to set up Dr. Java, which is called an integrated development environment, as well as the Java JDK, which is the Java development kit. Now, what an integrated development environment lets us do is it lets us code in a way that uh, highlights our syntax errors and just makes it a lot easier on us. So we're going to make sure that we get set up with that. So first, the thing we should do is just search Dr. Java. Okay. Once you've searched Dr. Java, inside Google or whatever search engine you might want to use, we're going to go to drjava.org. Once we're on drjava.org, we're going to see a header that says current stable release. Okay, this is where we're going to want to get our Dr. Java executable file. So if we want to actually be able to run this, we should download the Windows app. So let's go ahead and click this, download Windows app. It's going to take us to sourceforge.net which is just a place that we can get a lot of different files. Um, you'll see a lot of different sites that have open source um, programs uh, go through SourceForge. So if we look down here at the bottom of our screen, you'll see that there is a dialog box that popped up. Now I'm using Chrome, and whether you use Mozilla Firefox or you use Internet Explorer or even Opera, you may also get prompted um, that this may contain a harmful file. So you're going to want to go ahead and just say keep, accept, or whatever you might need to do to make sure that you actually download the Dr. Java file. Okay, so now it looks like Dr. Java has been downloaded. So if we just go ahead and click on it, it's going to start opening it. And it says, oh no, this application requires a Java runtime environment 1.5.0. And the reason for that is because we have we have to still install our Java in the first place. We have to install Java. We have to install the Java development kit. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to click OK. It's going to redirect us to a new page. Now this page is going to let us download the actual Java that we need to to be able to run these different programs to download the development kit. So as of today, which today is I believe September 3rd, 2016, uh, the newest update is version eight, update 101. And it says, that we can just click here for the free Java download. So I encourage you to go ahead and just do that. Click for the free Java download. And now it detected what type of computer we have. We have Java for Windows. And so now we just go ahead and say agree and start free download. Okay. So if you'd like to, you can look at the, uh, the terms of this end user license agreement uh, before you actually agree to it and start the free download. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just click this in this video. Again, let's go ahead and say keep. I'm totally fine with having this uh, on my computer. So now if we click this, executable, it's going to open up this Java installer. And with this Java installer, it's going to actually get all the resources we need to put Java onto our home computer, whether it's a laptop, desktop, doesn't matter, so long as it's a Windows computer. Okay, so it says, welcome to Java. Java provides access to a world of amazing content, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it does. Java is really a wonderful language. So if you want to see more information about what sort of information Java collects, you can go ahead and click here. Um, as soon as you click install, you're actually accepting the license agreement. So again, I encourage you to read that. But in this video, we're not going to read it. So click install. So now we had a dialog box for Java setup. So we can get the best of the web with Yahoo if we want to. But what this is really just going to do is it's going to end up cluttering up your uh, your browser bar, which you don't really want to do. So go ahead and say, do not update browser settings, unless you really want to have the Yahoo tab there, in which case, go right ahead. Okay, so now if I hit next, it's actually going to start installing Java on our computer. As you can see, 3 billion devices run Java, so this is a very ubiquitous language, and it's a good one to learn. Awesome. So now we see that it says that we have ins successfully installed Java. Um, and now it's going to prompt us about updates and whatever. Uh, we can just go ahead and close out of this. So now you officially have Java on your computer. Yay, yay. However, we can't so easily go immediately back and just get our, um, our Dr. Java executable that we just downloaded. So the way that you're going to get back to that executable that you downloaded is to go to your downloads folder. Now, one way to do that is to click on your file system. That could be either located inside of the Windows button here on your home page, or uh, maybe you have an icon for the file system. But in the file system, you want to navigate to downloads. So I went ahead and created a shortcut on my um, desktop for this. So we click here, 
it'll take us to our downloads page. Here it is. Okay, so this is going to be our Dr. Java executable that we want to actually run. Now I could just run it from here, but I think it's a lot easier really to just create a shortcut so you can access Dr. Java from the front page or your desktop page, I should say. So if you right click it, you can actually navigate all the way down to the send to option on any Windows system and go over to desktop and create a shortcut. And as soon as we do that, we're able to minimize this and look at our desktop and there it is. There's Dr. Java stable shortcut. And if you want to rename this, that's fine. Uh, just go ahead and right click it, rename it. Uh, we'll call it Dr. Java. Okay. So now we have an icon for our Dr. Java program. So now we just double click this. And now there it is. Dr. Java is officially running on your computer. Exciting. So now um, this just means that Dr. Java is loading. So we'll give it just a sec. All right, so let's read this. Do you want to associate .java, doctor, .doctor Java, and .dj app files with Dr. Java? So for right now, I would say go ahead and click yes so it's easier to set up. This is not going to make it so it always happens, and you can always change this by going to the Preferences tab under, and then look under Miscellaneous File Types, okay? So we'll just select yes for now. And here it is, Dr. Java, the one, the only, the great Dr. Java. I don't know where he got his doctorate degree from, but anywho. Okay, so I'm gonna describe the different parts of this. Uh, so right here, we have our main editor, so I can type a bunch of text into here, okay? So this is just gibberish right now, okay? Uh, and I can save this gibberish if I want to by just clicking save, and then I can choose where I wanna save it. I'll say, all right, I wanna save my gibberish, and I wanna save it right here, okay? So I just save gibberish.java. Now. This is not an official Java program, so it's not going to compile if I click compile. It's going to say a whole bunch of errors. Yeah, see, 11 errors found. You don't want that. So let's create a file that's actually a little bit more legitimate. So let's create a new file by going up here, selecting new. Okay, and now it created an untitled because we haven't done anything to it yet. And let's get rid of this gibberish.java. We'll just close this file. No, we don't want to save it. We'll just close it for now. Okay, so now we have a new untitled file. And so this is the main text editor area, and this is actually where you're going to be able to control all of your files. So this is going to show um, the root directory of where your project is, along with all the files that are in there. And I'm gonna show you how to set up a project in just a second. And then down here, we have our compiler and our console, as well as our interactions. So these all have different functions. This is going to be our compiler output. This is going to use a, uh, in this case, we're using an Eclipse compiler but uh, if you download other compilers, you can use those as well. So what this does is it tells us the errors that we might have whenever we compile our Java file to make it something that we can actually run. Um, so in our case, since we made a bunch of gibberish, there's a whole bunch of weird errors. We don't even know what those are. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Then if we go over to console, this is where you're going to have uh, interaction with the actual program. This is where it's going to prompt you for things and whatnot. And then we have interactions, okay? So here, if we take a look at interactions, this is one you're gonna to wanna to use quite a lot. Within interactions, you're able to type Java commands. So for instance, let's say I wanna type, uh, I wanna say, I wanna say hello world. I could say system.out.print line, and then I type a string saying hello world. Whoops, not a Q, world. And there it is, the output right there of what I just typed. So if I don't know what something does in Java, um, I can always test it here without it having any ramifications on what I'm typing in my text editor, okay? So let's say I wanna find out, can I type system.out.print Q? Is that gonna work? Is that gonna be a valid Java command? Well, if we try this, ah, static error. No method in print stream has print Q, which that's basically telling us that it's not gonna work. So this is a great way to test different commands that you want to actually put inside of your files, okay? So now comes the fun part. We are going to create our first project. So we're going to go to project. We're going to select new. And now we are going to go to documents. Now here, this is these are my documents. You can see the file path here, C, which is my C drive, or users, user PC, all the way to documents. So if I go ahead and let's say I want documents to be my actual uh, project folder. So this will contain all of my different projects. I made a little Hello World project earlier, okay? 
Um, so we'll go ahead and just save this. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll overwrite that. Okay, so now we have different project properties. So by selecting my documents folder, I made that my project root. And what project root means is that's where all of your information for your project is actually going to be stored. So um, for instance, if you have a bunch of Java files and you want to you wanna have them all be in the same place, you would put them inside of this project root. Now let's say you don't want it to be documents, that's fine. You would just pick a different folder when you create a new project, all right? Uh, build directory, you can ignore that for right now. Working directory is where everything's going to be happening. Um, and then you don't need to worry about any of that. So we're gonna go ahead and just click apply. Once we clicked apply, we can click okay. And now we have our own project. We have our first Dr. Java project and it's inside the documents folder and these are all the files. So we have a file that's called untitled here, which is here by default. So now we can actually create our first Java program. And I'm gonna show you guys how to compile it and how to run it. So the first thing you gotta do with any good Java program is do a quick bit of commenting. So we'll say uh, this file will say hello. Okay. Then I'll say at author, uh, T.A. Sean. And I'll say at version, uh, today's date. I really should put today's date in here, which is, let me think if I remember correctly. I hope that's correct. Okay. And then I'll close that tag by doing this. All right, there's our comment tag. So if somebody were, were to look at this file in the future, whether it's you or somebody else, they can see what's in here. All right, next, we're going to go ahead and create a Java class. So this doesn't need to make sense to you right now, but I'm gonna create a class called hello. And that's going to create a file called hello.java once we save it inside of Dr. Java. So we have public class hello, and then we want to do something called create the main method. So I type public static void main string array args. And you guys don't need to know what this is right now. Honestly, reading all this stuff, you can say that that means Alex, Alakazam. That's all. It, it, it's magical. It lets you run things inside of Java. That's what you need to know for right now. Okay. So now that we have our main method, we can try something. So let's say I want this to say hello. Well, if I want it to say hello, I can do system.out.print line, and I'll say hello. Okay. So now, now that I have a Java program that I think is going to work, there's one way that I can check this. In fact, I have a whole project, which is just one file for right now, that I think is going to work. And so if I want to actually check that project, I would go to compile project, click this, and it says here, to compile, you must first save all modified files. Would you like to save and then compile? Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and select always save before compiling too. So that way it always saves my files. So let's click yes. Okay, and let's see what the compiler output says. Ah, that's from before, so let's compile again. Let's see, it seems like there's a bit of a, oh, I didn't save the file yet. So before we can actually compile, we should save the file. So we'll save the file as hello. All right, and it says this file already exists because I created this earlier. Yeah, we'll get rid of it. All right, great. Now we can compile. So if we click compile, it is going to say compilation completed. And when it says compilation completed, that means everything went well, okay? So now let's see what happens when we actually run this. So once we've compiled the project, then we can run it. So let's try running. Hello, awesome, it looks like our program worked. And notice what Dr. Java says here. It just says run hello. So if I were to type run hello inside of this project, it would do the same thing. It's gonna run my hello file, okay? So that's why the interactions bar is actually really important, okay? Excellent, so now let's see what happens if we mess up. Let's say I wanna do what I did earlier. I want to do system.out.printq. Uh-oh. Well, I don't think system.out.printq is actually a valid thing, but let's go ahead and try to run it. Uh-oh. It says here that when we try to run it, it says our current document is out of sync with the interactions pane and should be recompiled. Well, the reason we have to do that is because we've effectively created a new sort of Java document by making it print q instead of print line, so we can't run it again. Every time we make any sort of edits in, of our Java file, we have to recompile our code. We have to translate it from this high level language that we see to a low level language of zeros and ones that our computers can understand. 
Okay, so first thing we got to do is we got to compile it. Okay, uh oh, it looks like it found an error. Now, this is a similar error to what we found before. The method print queue is undefined for a java.io print stream. Okay, so that's, a, that's an easy mistake. Let's change it back to print line. All right, now let's see if I can run it. Oh no, I changed it. So that means I have to recompile again. So let's compile one more time. Awesome. Com compilation completed, and if I run it, there we go. Okay. So that is how to set up and do your first program uh, inside of Dr. Java. But one thing that I think is really important is that people are able to actually read what's going on. So uh, I actually already changed some of the settings. When you first get Dr. Java, it's going to be relatively small. Uh, if you want to make the settings a little bit better so that you can actually read the text, I would click Edit and go down to Preferences. And once you're here, I'm going to make this full screen. Once you're here, go ahead and go to Display Options. And once you're in display options, go to fonts. And now you can change the main fonts. So for instance, I have mine at 18. Uh, and actually starts out relatively low at, at 12. So if you want to make it a larger text size for you to be able to read, I would recommend going into here and changing it. And I can make it whatever text I want. I can make it a whole bunch of different um, fonts. Uh, I just personally like monospaced. So I'm going to stick with that. OK? Great. All right, so now we can apply that, hit OK, and there we go. So that's everything that we have today for Dr. Java and how to set up Java so that you can um, use it inside of this environment. So I hope this video was helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the discussion board and contact any one of your TAs. I hope that helped. Um, I'm glad that you guys are all set up now with Dr. Java. Like I said, feel free to leave a comment um, on the discussion board for any of us. My name's Sean, and welcome to the course.